There is nothing in this world that compares to a topwater bite, is there? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe a, a great big vicious spinnerbait hit, but top water, man, you just you see that explosion, and they're coming out of the water at it sometimes. So I'm going to show you a simple, very cool three season pattern on a top water. This is the KO for the Pop Max. It's got gill through technology. It's got uh, the slits in the mouth that feed water through the gills and out the sides. Awesome, awesome bait. And for a knockoff, or let's just say a generic imit imitation, um, nah, for a knockoff, this thing is really good. This particular blank came from Schultz. Uh, Predator also has a I don't want to say identical, but an identical version um, for twice the price here in the States. And uh, my recommendation is if you want a decent pattern, get a few of these. And you just have to be careful when you're clear coating. A lot of people ask how you clear coat without clogging up your gills. Um, some people can dip them upside down and run it out through that way. I generally don't. Uh, all I'm going to be doing on clear coat. I'm going to hang them this way, um, straight up and down, and apply very little to this. Some people even brush that on, but we're not going to do that. Today we're going to do an American Bullfrog. Real easy. You can even do your own stencil if you want, but I am going to be using an R-Tool stencil. Um, it's a template that I use frequently on a, a couple of different patterns. I've used it before in a crappie pattern. It's a very effective frog pattern. And for the American Bullfrog, it's kind of like a, an olive drab or khaki colored frog once it's full grown and they get big and it's got a lot of dark spots in it. Um, it'll go down to a white or almost a pale yellow flesh tone on the belly. And then we're going to give it that red mouth. We're going to give it some really cool eyes. A little bit of flash and pop and some pearlescence. So I am going to be using Comart colors, the airbrush and paintbrush, opaque pearlescence. It's not completely opaque. Uh, in fact, it's it's fairly translucent, at least I've found. But it's just it's a it's a lot of fun to finish a bait off that way, and it also kind of mutes the colors a little bit too, gives it a more accurate match the hatch portrayal, which is what we're kind of going for on an American bullfrog. Let's get started. We're going to start out by loading the uh, chamber up with some pearlized white, it's Createx pearlized white. Pearl has a tendency to shoot a little bit thicker than the transparent, translucent baits, or um, colors rather. So one thing you want to do when you're shooting the base colors for these is turn up your pressure just a little bit. My pressure is at 45 and we're ready to go. And because this is one of, most, one of the most popular patterns that I do in a top water, I have a run of them set up because I do have some customers waiting for them. So we're also going to show you how to effectively do a run of baits as well. Real quick, we're just going to dust the top of this all the way around so you get that pearlescence. Now I have several helping hands set up and that does help a great deal, no pun intended. But when you're doing a run of baits, having something that you can pick up and utilize at your fingertips it sure does make a world of difference. Now I've run that out and another thing that you'll find is that when you turn your pressure up, you tend to shoot your paint out a little bit quicker, so be mindful of that. You want to conserve as much paint as you can, but at the same time, you want a good even coat on this. So I have to do three like that. I'm actually going to do a bonus bait for you guys today that's not going to be an American Bullfrog. It's going to be a pretty cool pattern, but not so much in the American Bullfrog. But we're still going to shoot it with a little bit of pearl. Just to give it that undercoat. And again, white, it, it's fairly easy to use that as a primer. 
just knock the rest of that paint off of there. I'm going to heat set all four of these and come right back. From our pearl white, we're going to go to another pearl color. This is a pearlized pineapple. Hang out with some fruity flavors today. Or at least some summertime tropical flavors, colors. Just barely dust the sides of this a little bit on the bottom. Because while these frogs do have a little bit of a yellow tone, they are most often found to be more of a khaki or olive color when they're full grown. Now, if you're doing anything that's in stained water, you might want a little bit of brighter tones to it, uh, just to kind of make that a little bit more noticeable in stained water. But really, not all that necessary. I am going to use just a little bit of tropical green. We're going to go on the sides, fading up to the top on this. And then we're going to accent it. This is another green that's got a lot of yellow in it. I'm probably going to have to refill the chamber here. Again, pressure is set a little bit higher than normal because I am using quite a bit of pearlized colors today. And sometimes you just need that extra oomph to get that to shoot through your airbrush. So that's why we're on set about 35. I'm doing about 45 today. And you now have your general tone on this. Now remember I said I'm not doing this fourth one in the run. But you can see as I'm moving through this how you set this up. Get your helping hands. If you have a few pair, I, I tell you, I, and I've seen them set it up where you can kind of spin this around. I can spin this around too with my hands. I don't have it where I can, some people really go all out and they use it on a, on a turner or a wheel where they don't, they can have a hands-free environment. It's not 100% necessary to do that, but it is pretty cool when you do. But for the purposes of me, I don't. So we're going to do it. Now you can see I'm starting to lay in that olive. And I'm going back to that green that I mixed. Oh, shoot. This is a, I call it the Ozark green, but it's a really good olive colored green, like an army green almost. going to kind of accent and highlight as we go. We want the cheeks done that color. Now I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure on the trigger with this because this is a true transparent bait and it will flow pretty quick out of this air gun, a little bit on the back because you do want the variations in color that you would find in nature. So, I don't know, hopefully the camera can pick this up. But we've got that yellow, a little bit of white on the belly. And then we've got our couple of different greens on top. You do want to be able to distinguish those colors because you would find that distinction in nature. So again, on this one, very lightly pressing on the trigger. And do the back side. And a little bit on the top of this bait as well. Just kind of run that all the way out. We are going to accent the eyes, but we're not going to accent those eyes until we get a quick heat set on this because we're going to use a dark moss wicked green on that. We're going to put this Ozark green away for now. I'm going to clean out this chamber. I'm going to reload it with the moss green. Do a little quick heat set on these guys, guys and, and, right and it's too. mostly dry. It's probably still a little bit tacky, so I, I wouldn't want to touch it a whole lot. But I'm going to kind of avoid 
painting on the body of the bait. I'm going to concentrate on hitting the red spot in the mouth right now and working on this bait because one of the things that you'll find is that the more layers of paint that you put on a bait, especially if you're working with wet on wet, and what I mean by that is for blending purposes, instead of heat setting after each particular color change, you can actually leave those sit. As long as your pressure is controlled and you're not blowing the, the different colors all over the bait, and a lot of times you'll kind of get that push where you'll get that build up. It looks really bad, so you really want to make sure that your pressure is controlled and your trigger finger is controlled when you're adding a bunch of different layers of different colors to a bait that has not been heat set. The other thing that you risk is a cracking effect, which some people think is really cool, um, and it can be. It can be a really neat effect, but it's not a very natural one. Um, so if you're looking for a match the hatch, we're going to leave this to air dry. I'm going to load a little bit of... Uh, of red into the chamber and I'm going to work on this bait just for a second because this is not going to be a match the hatch. This is actually going to be a, uh, a different bait entirely. A much louder um, profile bait for stained water. But again, you don't need a whole lot. This is a transparent red still have my pressure up around 45 so we need to completely control our trigger finger now you can see that uh, you can hear the pressure there's nothing coming through because I have not squeezed back on the trigger hold that towards me you know it takes time to learn this stuff and while I was heat setting those baits and you can see I'm only painting inside of this mouth area now, because it does have that gill flow-through technology in this bait, uh, you can see, at least I think you guys can see, where there's a little bit of paint residual that gets back into the gills, that's fine. Um, a fish is going to have that, a frog, not necessarily because they're air breathers. But as I was heat setting this stuff a couple minutes ago, uh, I went back to a comment that somebody had made where they said that they just started watching my videos uh, a few days ago and they went back to some of the stuff that I had done in 2016 and what a transformation. And, and I've got to take a minute and acknowledge that because a couple things has happened. One, I kept at it and I kept practicing like all of you guys are doing. But I also had teachers that were willing to take time out of their precious careers and day and teach how to do these things. That's the whole purpose of me on camera trying to show you guys what I've learned. And I hope that it helps. I hope that, you know, there's somebody or a few of you out there that are going to carry that tradition on. Because everybody has a little bit different of a perspective on things. And you can kind of take what you need or take what you like and leave the rest behind. But hopefully you get a little bit of benefit and you've learned a few things like pressure control and, and gauging what kind of colors complement other colors and the differences in a lot of things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I hope that that's making you a better airbrush artist. I'm not the best in the world. There's folks out there that are just way, way, way better than I am. But I've, I've stuck with it. I've learned. I've listened. I've gotten opinions and I take criticism well and you have to. You've got to be a little bit thick-skinned. You're going to get trolled, especially if you have a YouTube channel. I don't recommend it. You won't be on my channel very long because um, there's no place for it. I run a family channel and I hope you guys can respect that. But it, it's okay to say things that, hey, I wish you'd done it this way or maybe try it that way or, you know, man, that bait really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get that. Um, but that's all part of the learning process. And if it weren't for guys like Jonas and Michael and Gerald and, and folks out there that are willing to take Russ Allen, willing to take time out of their day to show us how to do things, how they see it in their perspective, and, and patterns that are brilliant, that, that work. Well, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm just sharing that message and passing it forward to all you guys. 
that's the whole purpose for me being here. I love doing this, and, I, and I, that's my little soapbox. I'm going to get off of it now. But thank you so much for acknowledging. Uh, I can't remember who made that comment, and I apologize, but I'll make sure I credit you guys in the, uh, in the description below. Um, but thanks for making that comment, and thanks for acknowledging the change, the metamorphosis that's taken place over the past few years in my career. That was a long time ago. And i got to tell you, folks, uh, I, I'm not doing baits like that anymore. And the baits that I started out with were good for the level that I was at, which was absolute beginner. Um, but hopefully you take it from there and you achieve a good amount of success with it. You're always going to hit plateaus. You guys are always going to get to points where it's like, oh, man, I, just, I can't just seem to jump to that next level. It all depends on what that next level is for you guys. Where you want to take your, you know, are you going to make a full-time career out of it like I've chosen to do, which is not easy, by the way. Folks, it is not easy to spray little pieces of bait and paint for a living, uh, even though I do canvas painting. But the reward is that I get to share what I do. I love what I do. I work for myself. Um, sure, is it a struggle sometimes? Yeah, I'm not turning a profit except for maybe three or four times a year that's a decent profit where I have a little bit extra, you know, and I can go on different, you know, I can go visit my family back in Maryland. It's not the point. The point is I love what I do, and it's, it's brought me to a point in my life where I'm comfortable and I'm happy, you know, and, that, and that's where you guys should be in your own levels. Um, so with that, we're going to go back to our trigger control. And just painting that little bit of red. Thank you guys for listening to my soapbox moment here at the Juggle Baits Workshop. Hope it helps you through your day. But I wanted to take just a minute and acknowledge the reason that I've gotten better is because of guys like Ornstein and Summers and Russ Allen and Gerald Novick and all those folks out there. Um, I watch ladies and gents alike, and I always learn something from everybody that's out there. And there needs to be more ladies out there. There's a few of you, but come on. Um, let's let's see what you got. Um, Jeannie for, for, and Dom, I mean, you guys are awesome as well. So I love watching you guys as much as I hope you guys like watching me. We are pretty much there. I want to add a little bit of red to that because this is going to be a fish. It's not, it's not going to be a frog. We have run ourselves out of red paint, which was the whole purpose. Gotten us through that soapbox moment. Change colors. And we're going to go back through. Set this one aside and get back to the, uh, the accent color in moss green. And then the actual frog pattern with the art tool stencil. Pull one of these fairly close for you guys. Um, every time I change to a very dark color, something that's going to be super noticeable against the lighter background, I always like to make sure that my, my paint stream is running fairly well and you don't want little splotches flying out. So we're just going to accent the eyes here and I'm going to do that in each particular bait that I do. It may not sound like it, but I promise you I have turned my air pressure down to about 20 PSI, down from 45. We were screaming PSI for the initial part of this. I'm also gonna do just a little bit on the lip of this bait. Get that a little bit darker. There we go. And the same with the other side. We're gonna do that for all three of these bullfrogs. Really? You see that mess? Look at that craziness. Oh, that's all right. Kind of blot that out. The humidity of the delta, and that's another reason you don't want to just necessarily go hog wild and come out guns blazing with your pressure. Because that's much, much easier to get off when you haven't pushed it out of your chamber real fast. <laughs> yeah. Still seeing a little bit of it, but that's, I don't care, it's, it's going to dry just fine. I'll just pull that off. 
not that bad. Same with this one. And on this side. And the nose. A little bit darker on that lip. And the last one. Just want to accent these eyes. And lift. Okay. Should be pretty decent. Maybe just bring this down a little bit more. I don't want too much. Because we're going to be adding in that detail in a almost a black color. The other thing that's fairly common is to see that little, uh, that round, I, I don't want to call it a gill plate, but uh, those of you that are much more versed in frog herpetology than I am, um, tell me what that little round thing is on the side. I, I, I know it affects how they make their noises, but I can't think of the name to save my life right now. I have to come back to that. The stencil that I'm going to be using is an art tool stencil. I'm going to bring my pressure back down since we're doing accenting. And just to give you guys a, a quick look at how we're going to do this. Again, anytime you're stenciling, you want to try and hit the edges of the stencil as best you can. Just to give it a little bit more shading. And that's what we're going to be doing here. I do have a, uh, a really dark green and also black in the chamber right now. I'm going to be utilizing both of them. They are going to flow through the air gun or the airbrush at the same time. And you can see. Just like that. And then on the smaller pieces that we're going to lay in, we can go ahead and just fill that in. Get them a little bit darker. And you can see the effect that it has on the colors and you have to have a, a dark enough accent color that you can pull this off with or else it's all just going to blend together. And you can kind of fade down onto the belly. Generally on American Bullfrogs their pattern kind of ends on their backs and their bellies are a little bit more white, maybe with a little bit of random splatter on it. And for this particular uh, run, we're, we're going to do one whole bait with the accent at a time instead of doing all three sides and then flipping it. So one of the neat things about these stencils is that they're pliable. Um, similar to what I use when I'm making my own cardboard cutout so that you can actually fold this across a round bait. They're not just good on flat sided baits like the Little John and the Dinger Custom Flat Sides. These do very well on rounded baits like this as well.
not going to do all three of these on camera. I'm sure you get the idea of what's going on in this pattern. And then again, just fade down the belly on the other side. It's almost like a ghosting effect. It's just a, a fade down or a fade away. It's a very light imprint. And if you see any bald spots, you don't want to over saturate the bait with imprint. But a little extra is not going to hurt. And there you have it. You now have an American bullfrog pattern. And I think I'm going to imprint the head just a little bit here. And all that's left is the eyes. And I might do a little bit of random splatter on the belly. But that's it, folks very good imitation of a very effective topwater bait. Well, there you go, folks. Pre-clear coat. You want to take a little bit of a closer inspection to it. It's got those lizard eyes, bright red mouth. This is more of a woodland green pattern. Very effective pattern. Deadly. Three seasons out of the year. You have any sort of temperature to the water at all, and the frogs come out of the woodwork, you've got yourself a top notch pattern right there. I hope that's helped. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for watching as always. I appreciate every one of you. Peace, love, and frogs. I think there's a peace frogs out there somewhere, isn't there? Maybe. Happy casting from Jen at Jekyll Bates.